Good riddance to the year of the narcissist. Hello, I'm H.G. Tudor, and an interesting article has come my way that's written by Lynn Stewart Paramore, a cultural historian, on something called Think, which is about opinion analysis and essays, and is linked to NBCNews.com. Of course, there has been a bit of a furore about the Politico article that was written by Joanna Weiss that labelled various people as narcissists, including, of course, Harry's wife. As far as I'm aware, Donald Trump didn't give a rat's ass about being labelled as such. Neither did Elon Musk. We haven't heard anything from Elizabeth Holmes or from Bankman Freed about their inclusion. Kanye West, or Ye as he's told, didn't appear to have responded either. But of course, there are a number of earnest individuals that felt that it was necessary to speak out on behalf of Harry's wife to suggest that it was wrong to include her in the list as a narcissist, even though it was entirely correct, because she is one. And furthermore, there was nobody else demanding an apology for all of the other individuals included, but they were for Harry's wife. That, of course, is the victim mentality that she demonstrates so much and through her supporters. All of the other individuals labelled as narcissists, those that are, will have a victim mentality too, but it's nowhere near as great as that as Harry's wife. Donald Trump, he is a narcissist, but he's an upper lesser type B. He's bold, he's belligerent, he's brash, he boasts. Don't like him? Fuck you. Your information's incorrect? Fake news. He doesn't play up to that victim mentality. He, of course, is plagued by paranoia, but not to the same extent as Harry's wife. He's far more brash and aggressive. He's not one to dole out pity plays. He doesn't feel sorry for himself. He has an unshakable belief that he's always right and everybody else is wrong. Harry's wife, of course, believes that everybody else is wrong and she is right when they criticise her. But she's far more passive-aggressive and whinging about it, crybaby that she is. When it comes to Bankman Freed, he will of course blame other things, blame the system. But he doesn't operate to the same level of victim mentality that Harry's wife does. And of course, those that are invested in Harry's wife because of their own personal agendas felt that it was appropriate for them to go to running to her defence, even though they all made themselves look like biased tits, because she is very clearly a narcissist. But what's interesting is that this article by Lynn Stewart Paramore appears, to my mind, to potentially be a further attempt to disassociate Harry's wife from the label of narcissist. You'll see why in a moment. She writes, The presence of narcissists permeates our society like second-hand smoke, poisoning public discourse. Wherever you turned, newspapers, websites, podcasts, social media or cable TV, their behaviour dominated the headlines in 2022, becoming ever more normalised and even celebrated. I don't think 2022 has been any different than 2021 or 2020 or 2019 or 2018 and so on and so forth with regard to the dominance of narcissists, but let's park that for the moment. Paramore writes, Though in far different fields, men like Ye, formerly known as Kanye West, Elon Musk, Donald Trump, Johnny Depp and Sam Bankman-Fried will forever be linked by this ignominious characteristic. Well, first of all, Depp isn't a narcissist, so it's wrong to include him in that list. But notice there, it's all about the men. There's no mention of Elizabeth Holmes, even though she's a convicted criminal and is a narcissist, and also a psychopath to boot. But again, Harry's wife isn't mentioned. It's all about the men that are labelled as narcissists. Almost as if to say, I'm not going to mention Harry's wife because she isn't one. Paramore continues, True narcissists self-centredly, self-centredly disregard the needs of others and care little for pesky matters like consequences. They can also tend to be manipulative, arrogant, grandiose and hungry for admiration. Always busy concocting fant- fantasies of unlimited power or brilliance. Narcissists delight in reeling others into play supporting roles in dream worlds where they are always the stars. Why have they gained so much power and influence? 
Why are so many people in thrall every time they open their mouths or fire off tweets? Are they the problem or a symptom of something bigger than their own egos? The truth is that our society breeds narcissists. We put them on pedestals and get a strong hit of vicarious pleasure when they act out. That's true to an extent. Some people, of course, can't stand the behaviour of narcissists, those in their lives or the ones that are publicly famous. And they most definitely are acting out. Over the past 12 interminable months, America has witnessed the rantings of Hitler-loving Ye, Musk's edgelord trolling on his new plaything Twitter, Depp and his toxic TikTok fanboys, incorrect, and Trump being Trump on any given day. Notice again that it's levelled against the men. Doesn't mention Elizabeth Holmes, who appeared in Politico and has been convicted after shafting people monetarily. Doesn't mention Jada Pinkett Smith and the way that she behaved with regard to Will Smith. Doesn't mention Amber Heard, a highly publicised narcissist in the course of the last year. And it doesn't mention Harry's wife. Interesting. Is there some misandry at work here? She continues, then just when we thought we had reached peak narcissist, along comes crypto bro Bankman Freed, all of 30 years old, seizing the stage with his alleged fraud fiesta, Feliz Navidad. Young Bankman Freed has been accused of running a con that rerouted billions from his FTX cryptocurrency exchange to his personal piggy bank and sister company, Alameda Research. Many people lost big sums when FTX blew up, and some did not have that wealth to spare. They include FTX employees who were encouraged to invest their earnings back into the company. A privileged son of two Stanford law professors, Bankman Freed disarmed with his unruly mop and schlubby t-shirt and shorts uniform. While seemingly not vain like Ye or Depp or openly thuggish like Trump and Musk, he nonetheless exhibits traits that point to something sinister behind the just-a-regular-dude persona. But again, notice how there is a failure here to make mention of Amber Heard abusing a man, a failure to mention Jada Pinkett Smith abusing a man, a failure to mention Harry's wife abusing her husband, her father, that there is something sinister behind the just a regular woman persona or the empathic princess persona. She continues to write, Bankman Freed practices the dark arts of narcissistic manipulation, styling himself as a guy who shuns material things. Why did you not write that Harry's wife practices the dark arts of narcissistic manipulation by pretending to be an empathic environmental warrior, but engages in repeated hypocrisies by telling lies and revising history, and abusing an aging monarch and her recently deceased husband? Deceased husband. She continues, yet his most recent home address before his detention in a Bahamian jail was a marble-clad penthouse in one of the world's most exclusive resorts overlooking a marina for mega yachts. Not exactly low-key. If what Justice Department prosecutors say is true, this is a guy who runs from accountability like the plague. Just like Amber Heard ran from accountability by suing Johnny Depp and the defending the claim that was brought against her and the way that Harry's wife runs from accountability by attacking an institution and then running away to Canada and then California when people stand up to her. But again, these does not get mentioned. I'm far from uh, defending Bankman Freed and his behaviour, but the point is, this is a rather one-sided attempt to try and demonstrate that it's men who are the bad boys and that women are the victims. Not the case. You only have to look at the analyses that I've done that demonstrate there are many female narcissists. And also, there are plenty of men that consult with me who've been on the receiving end of a female narcissist. If what Justice Department prosecutors say is true, this is a guy who runs from accountability like the plague. I got bad legal advice and resorts to minimising. It was all just an accounting error all the while playing people's heartstrings. I am, and for most of my adult life, have been sad. So the people who lost their life savings. Bankman Freed epitomises the narcissistic altruist. So does Harry's wife, but she's not mentioned. He claimed all his actions were designed to help others, as does Harry's wife. That helped divert attention from his antisocial antics. Psychologists labelled this the white knight narcissist, a person who hides selfish agendas behind florid displays of do-goodery, 
just like Harry's wife. Now, Harry's wife, of course, hasn't stolen money in the way that Bankman Freed has, although some people might question the way that she's gone about seeking donations and then channeling them into a company that's registered in Delaware. Whilst legal, one might say that it's morally reprehensible, which, of course, is something that a narcissist invariably is. Paramore continues, Here is a man who loses no opportunity to proclaim the philosophy of effective altruism, which holds that he must earn as much money as possible to save the future of humanity, yet screwed over the charities he promised money. Effective altruism is what happens when you take utilitarianism, the theory that actions are right if they benefit the majority, and hand it off to a pretentious tech bros. Musk is also reportedly a fan. Described as an ideology of hubris, it really is just a vapid belief that rich guys know best and that money can magically translate into salvation. Like all his narcissistic brethren, Bankman Freed likes to gulp down his own cool aid, deluding himself that he's one of the good guys, just like Harry's wife, just like Jada Pinkett Smith, just like Amber Heard, but forgetting to actually treat people with basic respect. The altruistic thing to do is to take chances, Bankman Freed once said, leaving out the part about taking them with other people's money. Self-serving statements like these will flood our ears as we ring in the new year, along with such gems as We got to stop dissing the Nazis all the time, much obliged, yay. Massive fraud of this type and magnitude allows for the termination of all rules, regulations and articles, even those found in the Constitution. Constitution, you don't say, Donald, my pronouns are prosecute Fauci, way to go, Elon, and I will fuck her burnt corpse, thanks, Johnny. This is narcissism at scale, but where do we go from here to try to transform these vile statements into action or persuade someone else to? That's what the House of Jan 6 committee spent 18 months explaining Trump did with the insurrection. Just a few days ago, one man attacked another in New York Central Park, shouting, Kanye 2024. Police are investigating it as a potential anti-Semitic hate crime. Encouraged by their narcissist heroes, maybe someone hunts Dr. Anthony Forsey down in real life instead of trolling him. Why not also mention the repeated attacks of the sugars on people? Those journalists doxing people that have spoken out against Harry's wife. Those sugars that have made threats to people and have done so on social media and have made alarming and unpleasant remarks about the Prince and Princess of Wales. Why are you not mentioning them, Paramore? This is all insanely dangerous, to say the least, but how did we get here? For one thing, our society teaches boys how to be toxic. From their earliest days in the nursery, daycare centre or preschool, boys see too few men in maturing roles. At school, they learn to interact with others through competition and domination. This model breeds heroic soloists, author Margaret Heffernan warns, who suppresses instincts for empathy and view everything through the lens of what's in it for me. Don't be mistaken at just thinking that it's boys that suffer from all of this. Girls do as well, but in a different form. Being the winner becomes all important. In college, young men find fraternities that link manliness to degrading women, out drinking peers and egging one another on. But it also fails to recognise that there are many women that are encouraged to attach themselves to a man, bleed him dry, utilise sex to draw him in. What about the writer of the rules, for instance, a pair of narcissists ever there were? What about those that are encouraged to utilise the facade of decency as a means to control people? Social media, Paramore writes, reinforces the me-me-me instinct. My aspirations, my clothes, my vacation, my life. See me, emulate me. And yes, there are plenty of female narcissists engaging in that. The more extreme you are, the more attention you get. Boys and girls grow up idealising movie stars, rap gods and politicians who gleefully, gleefully validate their worst instincts. They enter a workforce in which they regularly see the boss putting profits over every human value. All the while, the fear of being losers in a cutthroat capitalist system haunts them. If they manage to attain power, some turn into men, who, as economist Robert Reich describes Trump and Musk, wield sledgehammers to protect their fragile egos. What about Elizabeth Holmes, then? And live to exercise raw power over people. What did Margaret Thatcher do? If not, they may take out their grievances on the women, groups and ethnicities believed to have stolen their power. At the very least, they can bully vicariously. One key thing about narcissists, they operate in the fantasy realm. It's all a game to them, and they're eager to take others along for the ride. 
But there are a few hopeful signs. When conspiracy enabler Alex Jones squirms at Ye's anti-Semitic musings and shock jock Howard Stern calls Depp a huge narcissist, you have to wonder whether the narcissists in our midst have finally gone too far, even for America. At this moment, Bankman Freed is a disgraced man under house arrest at his parents' place. Trump seems to be losing ground, and Republicans on the House Judiciary Committee finally took down their Kanye Elon Trump tweet. Musk asked Twitter users whether he should step down as CEO, and they voted yes. Unfortunately, until we address root causes, there will always be another blustering bully, another Trump, another yay. I would also add, Ms. Paramore, that until you actually also accept that women can be narcissists as well, you're not going to resolve this issue either. 2022 ended with this rogues gallery. Dishonorable mention goes to Fox News host Tucker Carlson, Silicon Valley swindler Elizabeth Holmes, oh, finally got there, and if we're going global, Russian President Vladimir Putin took your time to get to him as well. But as new ones begin, maybe it's time to consider how to promote pride in characteristics and values that are socially beneficial, like honesty, helping others, and strength through self-restraint. We can remind ourselves that democracy depends on the sharing of power and resources, on the sense of a common fate. Remember, a society with more equality is a society with less narcissism. Perhaps building one of those is the best 2023 New Year's resolution of all. Whilst this article gets certain things right, it gets many things wrong. And of course, to suggest that it's good riddance to the year of the narcissist is naive in the extreme. Even though there's a handful of narcissists that are attracting public indignation, and condemnation, articles such as this misses out other narcissists. Of course, she's not going to be to list them all, but what is apparent is that this article focuses on a certain number who were mentioned in Politico and fails to mention others that were also, most notably, Harry's wife. I'm H.G. Tudor. Thank you for listening.